It's not muted. It's not her fault. If I mute this, she's not going to hear us, and we won't hear her. Let's see if she, can she hear us now? Can you hear, can you hear me? me? I can hear you, but it's feedback. Yeah. yeah. Here too. Okay, so now I see it's muted, so it shouldn't be feedback. I'm clear. Can you hear me? Uh huh, I am. So. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the budget presentation. For the Hang on, Ms. Henderson Baker. We got to get Napoleon rolling. Okay. We're ready. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the budget presentation for the Newton County Board of Education um, for fiscal year 2024. I am having to do this remotely, um, so I'm actually going to turn it over to Abigail, the vice chair, so she can lead the meeting. But I do apologize. I, um, you guys know I serve as GSBA president, and so that means Georgia only has one delegate, and I am Georgia's one delegate, and we have a national conference. So therefore, I have to represent all 180 districts. So I'm happy to do this meeting virtually. Um, so Abigail is going to handle today's meeting. So Abigail, do you want to take it from here, please? Yes, ma'am. I'll be happy to take over now. Um, so Ms. Henderson Baker has called us to order. And I believe now we're just going to go straight into the um, budget discussion. Yes. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for um, organizing your time so that you could be here today at 2 o'clock in the afternoon when you could be doing other things um, to talk with us about a very preliminary look at a budget that does not yet have all of the information that we need available to us to make it finalized. But we wanted to be responsive to the request of the board to have a meeting before the meeting where we could give you a very high level 50,000 foot view of where we are in the budgeting process. And Erica, our executive financial manager, has done a fantastic job um, pulling together all the information from all of the directors who you see here with us this afternoon in order to prepare a, a budget. And she will give us, via a PowerPoint presentation, the high points. And then you will have um, in your folders a takeaway document that you'll be able to review. Um, we didn't want to give it to you and have that in front of you. We want you to kind of look at the presentation so you have all of the background information you need as you look at the line by line analysis. And then we'll give you some next steps and we will go from there. And I just want to just take a moment to thank everybody in this room. They have looked hard and fast at their budgets to try to affect savings anywhere and everywhere that we can. Um, we always practice to be good stewards of the taxpayers' dollars, and this team has looked under every single rock in order to try to trim and tighten things up to the best of our ability, um, given the changes that you're about to hear um, when it comes to some of the expenditures we're going to have to absorb that are passed down from the the state. And so with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Robinson and we will uh, walk through the presentation. Good afternoon. Um, so today I will be presenting, sorry, the mic keeps moving. Um, so today I'll be presenting the fiscal year 24 um, preliminary budget. Um, we have been working on this budget since January um, and 
As I go through this presentation, I do want you to remember, as Ms. Beery just stated, it is very preliminary. Um, there are some key components right now that we don't have, um, but we hope to get those in the next few days um, to be able to add them to the budget. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and um, jump into the presentation. And so first, I want to talk about the revenue. Um, so. The key component that we're missing right now is the state revenue. Um, they are currently still in their budget process at the state level. Um, I believe today is the last day of the session, so um, you know, <laughs> hopefully we'll have something you know within the next few days. Um, but we do know some things that have been included in the budget that will affect us, and so um, I just want to go over some of the things that we are anticipating um, when it comes to state revenue. So first, um, we are anticipating that we will have an increase in our QBE state earnings um, to cover our health insurance increase um, and salary increases for select employees. And I'll go over that um, just a little bit further in the presentation. Um, we also are anticipating that we will have an increase in our local fair share. Um, we know that over the last several years, our tax digest um, has been increasing, and so when that happens, our local fair share is also going to increase, which causes a decrease in the overall state revenue. Um, we're also anticipating um, a decrease in equalization funding for the same reason, reasoning. Our tax digest has been increasing um, over the last several years, and so that's going to cause a decrease in the equalization funding. So those are the things that we um, are anticipating right now with our state QBE funds. Um, on the local side of things, um, again, it's still very early, but I did um, reach out to the tax assessor's office just to see if they had any kind of preliminary information regarding the digest. Um, they, they don't have any you know, concrete numbers right now as well. Um, they just said that they are predicting a slight increase. So I did incorporate um, within the budget for revenue a 5% increase in the digest. Um, when it comes to our intangible and real estate transfer tax, uh, we are predicting a slight decrease there. Um, and then for our interest earnings and our other local revenue, we're, we're, in, we're predicting a slight increase there. Um, with our interest earnings, um, with whenever the feds do an interest rate hike, um, it, it positively impacts, you know, if you have a banking account with interest that you earn. So um, we are anticipating that we will have a slight increase there. And so that's the information that we know right now or that we are anticipating right now for our state and local revenue. <clears throat> and so now I'm going to move into the expenditures. Um, this is the overall look of what we have included in the fiscal year 24 budget. Um, we, right now we have a total expenditure of $227.7 million for the general fund um, with a projected enrollment, enrollment of 18714 and so um, if you do that calculation, that would equate to $12,170 per pupil. And that's just for the general fund only. I know sometimes we see these numbers and it includes other funding sources in it, um, but this number right here is just for general fund. And so um, the pie chart here shows um, the breakdown of our expenditures by categories. And so the largest um, category that we have is salary and benefits, and that is at about 85%. And then our second largest is going to be our textbook and supplies. And um, for our textbooks, we did include in the fiscal year 24 budget um, funding for a textbook adoption. If you recall, several weeks ago, there was a presentation um, about um, math standards, and it was mentioned that we did not do the adoption this year. So we have included that funding for next year to do, to do the adoption. Um, the remaining categories are, are categories that are needed to operate the school system, um, your utilities and fuel, your repairs and maintenance, and then um, computers and all other um, expenditures. 
And so with the salaries and benefits being the largest portion of our budget, um, I did go in and do another pie chart to break that down by function code, which is how we have to report to the state. Um, and so um, the function code with the largest salary and benefits is in you know, the dark blue there at 69%. And that is for um, instruction. So all expenditures that are directly re re related to students um, go in that category. So the salaries go in that category for teachers and paraprofessionals and substitutes as well. So that's the largest portion of our salary and benefits followed by school administration, which includes your principals, your assistant principals, um, your, your school bookkeepers and clerks and front office staff. So again, those people are also um, directly related to or d directly connected to students. So now I want to talk about um, what the the increases are in our budget for fiscal year 24 that we are proposing. And so basically in the budget, the increase is going to amount to uh, salary and benefits. Um, so on this slide, I'm going to talk about the salary increases that we are proposing for fiscal year 24. So the first line is the certified salary increase. Um, we know within the state budget um, there is a line item um, that the governor is proposing to add $2,000 to the state-based salary schedule. And so we have included this in our proposal as well um, because if the state-based salary schedule is increased, we would also have to increase our salary schedule. So um, based on the employees that are within the district that are certified, um, the total cost for salaries uh, would be $2.6 million. Um, there are some benefits that are associated with that cost, um, and that's $777,000 for a total of $3.4 million. Uh, $3 million. Um, the next line is your classified salary increase, and we are proposing a 3% increase for classified employees. Um, the salary there would amount, or the cost for salary would amount to $793,000, and the cost for benefits would amount to $189,000 for a total of $982,000. <clears> um, the third line there is a pay grade adjustment for custodians. Um, we are proposing to um, increase the pay grade for, from a 4A to a 5. Um, and that salary cost would cost about $120,000, and the benefits would be $13,000 for a total of $134,000. And so the first three line items, you see there's an asterisk beside them, um, and that asterisk just means that there are line items in the state budget that would offset some of these costs. And also, I do want to mention, um, you do see school nutrition listed in the asterisk at the bottom. Um, that is just so that we know that they are not excluded from any pay raise. They are just not included in these numbers because they're not a part of the general fund. They're a separate fund, they're a federal fund. But they would still be you know, um, getting whatever raise they qualify for. Um, the last line, um, we are proposing to extend the certified salary schedule out to 30 years. Currently, um, it stops at 26 years of experience. Um, so we want to do this to try to retain um, some of those um, individuals that are past 26 years of experience. And so we want to extend it out to 30. And so that cost for um, the, event, the individuals that we have um, on staff right now is going to be about $801,000 with benefits at two thirty-two, dollars and the total being $1 million. So these are all of the um, salary updates that we are proposing that are included in the budget for fiscal year 24. Um, next, I want to talk about um, health insurance increases. So this is the largest increase in our budget, um, 
And when I talk about health insurance increase, I want to make sure that everyone understands that um, I'm not speaking of the premium that employees pay. I'm speaking of the premium that the district pays um, on behalf of the employee. So on January 13th, we received an email um, letting us know that there was going to be an increase in the um, price that we pay every month for every member. Um, it was going to be effective January 1st, um, so they sent it after the effective date, um, letting us know about this increase. Um, typically, we, they at least let us know a year in advance so that we can plan for it, we can prepare for it. But that didn't happen this time, um, and so we are looking at some significant increases that are going to occur even now in 23 as well as 24 and moving forward. So for this first slot right here is for um, certified staff because there is, there is a difference between certified and classified. So I'm going to go through the certified first. Um, prior to January 1, the monthly rate per member per month is nine, was $945. So for that, that equates to an annual amount of $11,340. Effective January 1st, that, that, amount is, that monthly amount is going to increase to $1,580 for an annual amount of $18,960. So for the rest of this fiscal year, we will be paying the $1,580 um, and, and going forward forevermore until they change it again, uh, we'll be paying the $1,580 per month, per member per month. So with certified staff, um, we do receive QBE funding for um, each earned position. So, so for health insurance, if we have an earned position, the state will also send us the money for um, health insurance. So just to give you an idea, in, in fiscal year 23, the year that we're in right now, uh, we were allotted $12.6 million for health insurance for certified individuals. So that's 1,114 earned positions. That's where we are for this year. So if we go look at next year, for fiscal year 24, um, based on the current numbers, we have 1,086 certified employees that participate in health insurance. So um, that means that the district will be paying $18,960 per employee for a total of $20.5 million in health insurance for fiscal year 24. So if you look back, we were at 12 million, now we're going to be at 20 million. So that's where the increase in the budget is coming from, the majority of the increase. But again, we know that we're going to receive funding for all earned positions. So in fiscal year 23, we had 1,114. Right now, Participant-wise, we have 1,086. So if we stay around that earned position number of 1,114, we would, we would be stand to receive, receive the full 20.5 million in QBE funding to cover it. I hope that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> so that, this is for certified staff. Now we're going to move to classified staff. So we got the same email on January 13th. Um, the only difference in the email was um, for classified staff, the email stated that the increase was going to begin on July 1st instead of January 1st. Well, there was a lot of rumbling amongst all the districts because um, districts do not receive any funding from the state for classified employees for their health insurance. So all of the health insurance that the district pays for classified employees comes from local funding. So we had no warning that this was going to happen, so nobody had time to plan for it, prepare for it, for anything. So everybody was in an uproar about it because, you know, quite frankly, some districts would not be able to do it. So there were various email scenarios that came out after that um, 
with different phase-in scenarios. And so the latest version that's in the state budget, and it's in the state budget, the, the verbiage is there, but the, there is zero dollars amount uh, allocated to it. So it's just in there, the verbiage is all that's in there. But here is the phase in plan. That is the latest version that's in the budget. So um, fiscal year, or I'm sorry, January 1st, 2023, we remain at 945 like we are. In January, on January 1st, 2024, there will be an increase of $250 per member per month. So that is $1,195 that the new rate would be on January 1st, 2024. And then on January 1st, 2025, they will add another 250 to that amount. And on January 1st, 2026, they will add $135 to that amount to come to the total increase of 635 over those three years. So, um, and then I have the bullet down here again, just to remind you that we, the local funding um, covers health insurance for class five people. So if we look at the cost for 2024 that we're estimating, um, we have 559 classified employees right now participating in health insurance. So that's gonna be a total budget amount of $7.3 million that's included in our fiscal year 24 budget um, to cover their health insurance uh, costs. And then just to give you an idea of what we would be looking at for the following years, um, just based off of the 559 participants, um, we, I have the estimated cost down here for 25 and 26. Now, of course, that estimated participant number could, ch could change uh, within the next three years, so this is just an estimate. But if you look at um, fiscal year 25, we're looking at 8.8 .8 million that we would have to pay in health insurance for classified employees. And that's an increase over fiscal year 24 of 1.5 million. And then in 26, we're looking at 10.1 that we would have to pay, which is an, an increase of 1.2 over fiscal year 25. So over those two years, we're looking at a, a total increase of 2.8. And then if you add, um, the increase that we're gonna experience for fiscal year 24, we're looking at almost $4 million over the next three years for um, in, um, health insurance increases for classified employees. So again, they sprung it on us. <laughs> Where'd you get the 13120? Um, it is, you're not gonna be able to come back to what's on the previous slide, it is because it's different for two reasons. One reason is that the increase is only for half of, year, half of a year. The second reason is that um, for classified employees, we have 230 day people and then we have less than 230. So the 230 day people are only gonna have six months of an increase versus the other people are gonna have seven months. So it's a, it's a <laughs> calculation, yeah, in there. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So this is where, this is where the, the crux of our increase in the budget comes from is, is the health insurance. Um, as we look at what else is in the budget that may be a new addition for fiscal year 24, um, I have it listed here and it's by um, strategic goal area. And so for student achievement and success, we have added the innovation for learning program. Uh, we have also added Nearpod and Remind School licenses. Those items were previously budgeted in the ESSER II grant. Um, that grant is ending in fiscal year 23, so if we would like to keep those items, they would have to be budgeted in the general fund. Um, we are requesting um, some positions. We're requesting a half-time gifted teacher for the theme school and a half-time assistant principal for Alcove High School. And then we are also requesting um, an upgrade to the grants coordinator position. Under high quality workforce, uh, we have added a wellness incentive program. 
Um, the, we have added the online wellness platform, which also was budgeted in ESSER II. Um, so if we want to keep that, it would have to be in the general fund. And then we just spoke about the permanent pay raises and the health insurance costs. Under culture, climate, and communication, uh, we are requesting 1.5 counselors. So that's one counselor at Newton and a 0.5 counselor at Alcovey. And um, organizational and operational effectiveness, uh, we did add a line item to upgrade the switches on our, net on our network. And we have requested an upgrade to the public relations specialist position. So those are the uh, main additions to the budget. Um, in your budget, in your packet that you have, you'll see this page right here. It's page number three. Um, so when you start to look at the budget, this is a summary of all the expenditures uh, by department. So you see the salary and benefits at the top, followed by all of the departments. Um, and then you can see the fiscal year 24 compared to fiscal year 23. So at the top, you see the, the increase in the salary and benefits is about $12.7 million. Um, down below, you have all of the departments, and there's going to be a detailed line-by-line -line item for each one of these um, as you go through the budget document. I do want to point out um, that the gifted and intervention program line, which is Department 449, um, you'll see that there is not a budget uh, amount there for fiscal year 23. Um, that is because that amount for, that's showing in fiscal year 24, it was pulled from elementary education and secondary education. So when you look through the budget um, in elementary and secondary, you'll see line items that have zero. Um, and that's because those same line items were moved to the gifted and intervention programs. And so um, our next steps in this process, um, we, we want to ask that um, the board members review um, the budget document, the line by line document that has been provided um, to you all. Um, and as you go through and review this document, we ask that you prepare and submit any questions or concerns that you have um, to Superintendent Fury by April 12th um, so that Ms. Fury can um, consult with the team to, to address the questions and concerns and then um, enable us to provide a revised budget to the board members um, by April 20th. And then we, on April 20th, we would also provide the capital budget, which is also known as East Bloss, um, so that you guys can review that as well um, in preparation for the budget work session that will be held on April 25th, 2023. And so with that, um, that concludes the presentation. I'll turn it back over um, to Ms. Coggin. Thank you. Um, I was busy putting the dates in my calendar because if I don't do it now, it may not happen. Um, thank you, Ms. Robinson. Um, are, do our board members have any questions, comments with what was presented today? I have a question about the, the budget summary, the, the state revenue. And I, it's the highlighted one, so I know it's not accurate yet. What, what, it, what is that number that's there now? Um, this number is the state, the state grants, the smaller state grants that we get, um, like CTA, some, some CTAE grants, the math and science grant, um, Young Farmers grant. Those numbers, um, we, we estimate those numbers anyway. They don't come um, mm -hmm. exact from the state budget. So I've already estimated those numbers. Okay. So that's just not including any of the state Correct. Any uh, of the QBE, QBE funding. Okay. Yes. So it needs to be at least close to the 120. Or, or more. Yeah, it needs to be more. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just want to make sure that as I'm looking at it, because, yeah, that's a. Yeah, it needs to be significantly more to right. cover the okay. health insurance. <laughs> All right. Look forward to seeing that number. Yes. <laughs> we do too. <laughs> Anyone else? Vice Chair. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
Ms. Henderson I Baker. Have one question, if I may. Yes. So my only question is about like the salary study that I know we had completed or that the system had completed. I just wanted to make sure everybody was up to date on salaries or if anybody had any concerns about their current pay grade or salaries that that had, be, had been looked at um, because that's going to help me center my question. Like, is there anybody out there, like certified or non-certified, that we should be aware of? Well, um, I'm, I'm not real sure what the what you're asking, but I would think if you took a poll of the people just sitting in this room, everybody here would say their salaries don't match the amount of work that they do. So we definitely have looked at salaries and benefits, and we have done that consistently over time. And we actually looked at the Metro RESA um, salary study and tried to align the salary schedules to ensure that we will be, if not the top paid, really, really close to it out of the RESA regions that are studied in the salary study and then our, just our look at salary schedules that are posted in districts. So yes, we have looked at salary schedules and looked across, which is why you see the on the document, you'll see the custodial staff moving from four to five, and the school nutrition people will do the same to try to get them to a place where they're competitive with other districts. Okay, and that's inclusive of front office staff, um, clerks, registrars, all of those people. We've looked at everybody, yes. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh -huh. And Ms. Henderson Baker, just to be clear, we've looked at it for multiple years, like all the time. We just keep looking and looking to see where we can try to make those adjustments. Um, so we, even though we try to do a salary study about every five years, even in the interim, we're still trying to keep an eye on it so that we can um, try to improve salary and benefits for, for everyone. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else? Yeah, just a couple on the... Uh, up the budget additions, Nearpod and Remind. Um, it says it's previously budgeted in ESSER two funds. Did did we not have those uh, software prior to the ESSER? Well, I'm going to let Dr. Thomas answer the question, but I, I believe we we had sporadic use of Remind prior to ESSER. We went correct. school system wide with ESSER. And now we're so much in love with it, it would be hard to, it, it would change, I think, everything. So, but Dr. Thomas, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that, that is correct. Um, schools use their own funding source, their school-based funding source to um, support the purchase of Remind. Um, Discovery, I mean, Nearpod, we didn't have that at all, did we? No, we did not have Nearpod at all before the ESSER fund supported it with financing. Okay. Gotcha, thanks. And then the, under high quality workforce, the online wellness platform, again, it was just brought about, I think during the pandemic and then with ESSER funds. What's the, could we get, could we get some numbers on that? Just like how, how effective maybe it has been or you pointed to. And so Ms. Sanders and her oh. department, they actually work with the um, Burn Along software. So Ms. Sanders, I don't know whether you are prepared to share any information, but she would have that information for okay, you. Thanks. Um, yes, we um, do have some numbers. Now keep in mind that we did start this um, in the middle of a year, so we don't have two full years um, to be able to show the um, effectiveness of it, but the usage has been um, going up some, and we had um, about 449 individuals who have signed up uh, for the program since we started it. Um, and we're also recommending an incentive to try to help even more employees sign up for it and use it more often. Okay, gotcha. And is it paid, um, it might be in the document somewhere, but is it paid per usage or do we pay a, a... It's a flat fee. A flat fee? Yes. Okay. For the number of employees in the district. Okay. And I'd love to get that number. If it's, if it's in here, I'll dig and find it's it. It's in there. Yes, okay. it is. Okay, all right, thanks. And Ms. Sanders, didn't they, and just, just for expansion purposes, 
If I'm not mistaken, didn't they send us an email where they have expanded the use of Burn Along to be in in person now? So Burn Along has traditionally been um, virtual, so you can join classes with your friends and everything else, and the instructors are in virtual land. But they sent us an email that says they're expanding it to uh, what we would imagine are locations. And so now you can go to a place and the district is sponsoring you, and not just you, but your family as well, to be able to participate. So it's a, it's bigger than just a health and wellness and a, a initiative for employees. It's also kind of reaching back into families and allowing for them to sign up as well to, to be able to participate. Um, and so that was an, a new feature that cost us zero dollars. So I was really excited to see that. And just to clarify, this is the kind of things that you want us to review and come back to you with yes. all the questions so that you can compile everything and share with us. So this is something, if you, know, you don't have the information, that yes. we can get this information. So please, yeah. all of us, remember to do that. that yeah. Don't just leave um, her out in the cold. We need, to, we need to focus our attention and make sure we get these questions to her so that our staff can get those numbers for us. So if it's not just the wellness program, it's all of the um, programs that we have. Anything else? Just come in. I, I don't see, you could be in here, the people that we were talking about at the last meeting, the MTSS, people that will be running out of funds from the Essex program we made any provision going forward to budget those. So next, well, we currently have them in ESSER 3, the ESSER 3 budget. So the following year, we will be bringing, um, through Mr. Roundtree, <laughs> we will be bringing an item to add those MTSS specialists to the general budget. But for the FY24 next year's budget, they will currently remain in the um, ESSER 3 funding budget. So all of those, if we don't renew them, they will terminate all at the same time? That is correct. But I want to turn it over to Mr. Roundtree because some of the MTSS um, staff members are funded in the general budget, but Mr. Roundtree will be able to speak more specifically to that. Currently, six of them, which were in the, and thank you, Dr. Thomas, six of them were the, in the original pilot program for the district, so we've always kept those six generally funded. The remaining, um, it will be 17 um, this next year because we're bringing on the Career Academy. They are in ESSER 3, so they are grant funded for, the, for this upcoming school year. So you're right. Um, if you all don't put those 17 in the FY25 budget, then those 17 will, those positions will be terminated. So that's why we brought it, uh, the presentation to you a year in advance so that we can start um, preparing you for the fact that we're going to ask you to fund those 17, but we have grace for this next year for those positions because they are grant funded through ESSA. Does that answer your question, Mr. Johnson? Thank you very much. You're welcome. And thank you for considering them already. <laughs> now keep that same line of thinking this time next year now. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to see why we couldn't make provisions to increase our reserve funds for that if that opportunity presents itself so it won't be too much of an initial headache coming in 2024. We're working on it. We did, as if I'm, and correct me, Dr. Thomas, if I'm mistaken, we did talk about that when we were preparing the budget, mm -hmm. but we thought that since we already had the money, um, you just set aside in the in the grant, you know, we didn't want to tax the general fund, um, you know, too much this year um, because of the other new initiatives that we decided to just keep them grant funded since the money is already there in the grant. And additionally, with the ESSER 3 funds, there's a, a 20, what you say, an old old? Oh, we have a 20% requirement um, for the loss of learning um, program and initiatives that we've already outlined within the ESSER 3 budget, and that was one of the items that was in that 20% item, itemization. Um, for us to support our students with loss of learning. So we do want to keep the MTSS specialists in the ESSA 3 budget so we can meet the requirement of the ESSA 3 funds. Okay, I appreciate that, but I still say ounce of prevention is worth more than a ton of cure. And if we proceed and manage the process and be proactive and put additional funds in our savings, 
to help us deal with that because the unknown is what's going to get us. Yeah, right. If we prepare for it now, we won't have as many unknowns. Yes. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. Yep. And what's that estimated cost, uh, Mr. Roundtree, since you're so excited to talk about this for <laughs> FY25? Uh, that's, uh, Ms. Robinson has already, we don't have it with us, but the calculation has already been done um, for, for what they cost. But Dr. Thomas may know it right off the top, do you? But because this budget is so, it's just a push of a button for us to get it. So we'll have it for you at the next meeting. Somewhere between a million and a million and a half? Uh, go ahead, Ms. Robinson. <laughs> it's a, you figure about it between right. eighty and a hundred thousand dollars per person salary right. and benefits times so seventeen so plus six. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? Um, I just want to say thank you all. Um, this is great, and I know it's preliminary, um, and we've got a lot of numbers we need to fill in. But I do want to um, reiterate that we need to get this information or questions to you by April 12th mm -hmm. so that these great people out here can get to work and try to answer <laughs> um, that for us. So I appreciate it. Um, Ms. Robinson, do you have anything else? Ms. Fury? I do not. Um, I just want to just thank you all again for taking time out to, to I know it's Everybody has such differing schedules. It's hard to, to get everybody together. And I appreciate y'all coming in. And I'm hoping that this is helpful to you in your planning processes for when we really sit down at the April meeting to put the pencil to the paper. And really, we'll have some more solid numbers by that point. We may not have digest numbers at that point, but perhaps a, a closer estimation of what that looks like. Um, and then again, just to, to reiterate, thank, thank you to the team. They've been working hard. Everybody has been working hard trying to make it work. Well, like I said, I appreciate this. And I can go on spring break and have some wonderful reading <laughs> material and, uh, and sort of figure out what's going on. But I appreciate the hard work again. Um, I know putting together budgets is just maddening. So it's, it's fun. Okay. We love it. We love budgets. Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> All right, well, um, let's see. So next on our agenda um, is other matters of interest. Just a few days until spring break. Um, Friday will be the last day of school and spring break will commence on Monday. And then I, I don't know the date that we return back from school. I, I haven't, the is it the 10th? I, I haven't looked that far ahead in the calendar. Um, April the 10th. And so we just wish everybody a safe um, time and hopefully our team will really step away and just just so you know I will ask all of them to put an out of office we're not responding to email a message on their computers while they are gone because they are all tempted to respond to emails so I, I was going back and forth with um, Donna Mosley last night at midnight via email so <laughs> folks are working around the clock so if you hear anything in the community, I tell them, please put this message in your out outgoing message so that people know you're not there and that you won't respond until you get back and then in the order that they receive the message. So um, I'm really proud of the team and, and the work that they've done to get us to this point. And I know they need time to breathe and rest. And so do the parents. But they uh, and the children need time children, to rest their brains so. because when they return, we'll be in the throes of what is for some a very important time, and that is our assessment season. For we, I try to help people keep in perspective about state assessments, and what I would say about that is the state assessment is one moment, one day, one time, it does not reflect the capacity of a child. Our kids are phenomenal students. They accomplish a myriad of fantastic things. And we, for as a society, as a community, as a nation, as a world, focus so solely on one single moment in time. It only measures what they know at that moment in time, if they take it seriously. Um, and, and it doesn't measure what they can know. And if we all took an assessment and someone judged us on that assessment, we might not be where we are today. So I just try to help people keep that in perspective and encourage our kids to do their very best on the state's assessment and know that our teachers have been working very hard, our school leaders are working hard, our district staff has been working very hard to try to fill gaps and 
um, in spite of the fact that we, we don't have all the staff that we need either. So um, there's a lot of challenges that are unreflected in, in the state's assessment, and I just feel strongly that we have to keep it in perspective. It's important, but it is not the only thing. So get ready. It's coming. Yes, very, very true. And then when we return, I think we only have about six, six and a half weeks of school until right. summer break. So yes. the countdown is on. Yes. All right. With that said, um, do we Vice Chair? Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have some other matters right quick. Okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. I'll make them real quick. I was supposed to mention one the other day, but because I was coming off the road straight to the meeting, I neglected and forgot. But I mean, just to parents, if parents are watching or parents go back and watch this meeting, even to board members, I would strongly encourage board members to watch the parent connect videos. I want to give a shout out and a kudos parent to the technology team and then the people they have gotten involved to do these parent connect videos. It is on Zoom, so you can be at work and watch it. You can be on the road and watch it. But the one I attended the other day was done by Jessica Harris on PBIS, and it was absolutely phenomenal. It was so phenomenal. I sent Miss Fury a text message to tell her about how great it was. So these are programs programs that we are trying to approve in our budget and we're looking at. So it's so important that we get involved and watch and participate because it helps to connect the understanding of the importance of the program and we see parents reaction. On the Zoom by itself, I commended Jessica. She used real life application of how she actually used PBIS and behavior modification in her own home with her own child so much so that it built such a great rapport that instantly parents in the chat just start asking questions. As soon as she was done, they was asking, hey, what do I do about my child with this? Um, the parents that did not have PBIS at their school, and I'm just using this as an example, they want to know why it wasn't at their school. And then she talked about the schools that are going to be adding it for next year. So that's just one topic. They are all recorded, so you can go back and watch them. But I really want to encourage people to watch it like it was absolutely when i say phenomenal phenomenal and then my other shout out the special olympus is going on before i had to hurry back home pack up bags to try to get on the road to go to tampa um i went to the special olympics this morning new county special olympics to volunteer if you have time please go and volunteer again this is the way we get to know programs and understand programs i met a parent came up to me who just so happens to be our parent mentor um, her name is Erin Howlett. So she took the opportunity to introduce herself. She's been in the, um, in the position for a year. And so she told me some of the things she did. I had the opportunity to ask her if she's enjoying it. She told me her perspective as a parent. So I love that. So I really want to encourage, if you have the time, y'all, please, please, please show up. So it, do, it really does help connect the understanding. Thank yeah. you, and I don't know if they if they heard if 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 Mrs. Henderson Baker's message was was loud enough for people to hear. So, do you want to recant? <laughs> Go if you. I can. Yeah, just real quick. Mrs. Henderson Baker was encouraging families and parents specifically to look at the Parent Connect videos that the district has created or is creating and has created. They're available in a recorded format on the website um, to get familiar with programs. And she gave a shout out to Jessica Harris, who led the last one, which was PBIS. And uh, Ms. Henderson Baker, I actually reached out to Jessica myself and told her the same thing after you sent me a text message. And then she also, um, Ms. Henderson Baker said to use those parent and connect videos to help familiarize yourself with all the great programming that's going on in the district and then finally to get out to the Special Olympics and volunteer time to support our students as they participate in the Special Olympics and she gave a shout out to our parent mentor who she met at the um, event this at the morning. event the, the event this morning and was able to hear her perspective on a multitude of things and so shout out to our team that puts together Special Olympics and our Parent Connect. So thank you. Great. Thank you so much. So with that said, um, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Mr. Johnson, do we have a second? Mr. Anderson Bailey, okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.